Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today we're going to go over the Bolt Shark Crossbow. There's a lot going on with this one, and while it might not be the strongest objectively of the new weapons, I think it does have a ton of potential and a lot of big skill curves that we haven't seen the end of yet. So without further ado, let's hop into the mod terminal and take a look at the upgrades. So starting with the base weapon mods, the first tier is already very interesting. This is where we get to pick our special bolt. First, we have pheromone darts. You get 12 of these. Next, you have a chemical explosion dart, which you have six of. And then finally, we have taser bolts, which you get eight of, right in the middle. Let's quickly go over these darts in game and see the effects. So the pheromone darts work about how you'd expect them to. It's a pheromone grenade in a bolt form. Unfortunately, it'll only apply to one enemy, so you have to be pretty accurate and choose your target specifically, but as pheromones are also getting a buff in this patch, it is quite effective. Obviously, you won't use it on every single bug like I am here, but you can see how effective it is as a distraction. Now, this one's a little bit more complicated. These are the chemical explosive darts. Once you implant the dart in an enemy, they will explode dealing massive damage whenever they're killed. This doesn't seem to scale with the strength of the actual enemy that it's implanted in, so it's probably best to always put this in a grunt or a weaker enemy. I can't say that I've had enough time with this dart type to really feel out the full power of it or just to be in enough situations to make good use of it, but I think there's a lot of potential here. And lastly, we have taser bolts. These are probably the weakest of the three options, but there's still some redeeming qualities to them. If you shoot them close enough together, indicated by the blue circle around the darts themselves, you can do a sort of turret arc effect, creating an electric beam in between them. However, since electricity is one of the weakest status effects in this game, it isn't exactly massively useful. Much like all the other darts, if you stick one to an enemy, it will stay to their corpse or follow them if they're still alive. But unless you're in an extreme choke point, I don't see these darts being extremely useful. Now for the second tier. These are a little bit more normal. First, we have increased damage and area damage. Then, ammo for your normal bolts. Or, special ammo which varies depending on which mod you pick in the first tier. If you have pheromones, it'll be plus five. If you have chemical explosives, it'll be plus two. And if you have tasers, it'll be plus three. In the third tier, we have reload speed or projectile velocity. Obviously, this will also decrease the drop that your bolts have over the same amount of distance. So essentially, it requires less aiming above your target. In the fourth tier, we have battle frenzy, a boost of movement speed whenever you land a killing blow, or a very interesting mod, which allows you to recall your arrows remotely. The remote bolt retrieval is quite nice. The only catch is you have to have the crossbow in your hands to make it work. If you have the grappling hook or any other weapon, it's not going to work. Obviously, the less you miss your shots, the less useful this mod is going to be. So this is kind of one of those training wheel kind of things. And in the final tier, we have more potent special bolts, which will increase the effect duration of every bolt type. Magnetic shafts, which to make a long story short, Whenever an enemy is electrified, your darts will home in on them. And finally, Banshee Module, which has a 33% chance to fear enemies that are near where the bolt lands. Important to note here is that if the bolt lands on the ground, it has a chance to fear enemies, and then the bolt will be retrievable again. So in theory, if you just continue to shoot bolts at the ground, pick them up and shoot them again, you'll be able to fear all the enemies away from you. Moving on to the overclocks, let's start with the cleans. First of all, we have quick fire, which simply gives you faster projectile velocity and a faster reload time. Note that if you take the velocity on the base weapon and the overclock, you can get up to 300% velocity, which essentially makes your darts have little to no drop at all. And for our second clean, we have the specialist, which gives you more special bolts and increased special bolt duration, depending on which one you have equipped. With pheromone bolts, it's plus three and plus three, with chemical explosives, it's plus 2 and plus 2.4. And with tasers, it's plus 2 and plus 2.7. These numbers are obviously subject to change, but they seem like they're very specifically the way that they are. Now, moving on to the balance overclocks. This is where we start to get different types of bolts in the mix. Now, to be extremely clear, no matter which overclock that you pick, you will always have your special bolts from the first tier, whether they're chemical explosive, tasers, or pheromones. The overclock dependent bolts will change your primary bolts, which would be just the dumb bolts. For the two balanced overclocks, they're essentially the same thing, just fire and ice. Both of them reduce your area and direct damage by 25 each, and give you fire and ice bolts respectively. However, these work a little bit different than the sources of fire or cryo that we know in the game, which are fire grenades or cryo grenades that just do a burst of the element. 
Let's jump into game quickly and see how these actually work. These bolts work quite oddly in that they'll actually impale themselves into dead bug corpses that are launched around by the bow shots. I find it's much more consistent and reliable if you stick it into the ground and then run hordes over them, so these arrows really do thrive in choke point environments. Although I will say it's quite comedic to stick the bolts onto a moving bug or molly and watch things around them freeze uncontrollably. And also quite amazingly, with this overclock and the pheromone darts, you can actually take IFG grenades and essentially have the effect of all three of Scout's grenades at the same time on the same build. As far as negatives go, unfortunately, since this is a slow trickling cryo effect, you will need multiple to freeze larger enemies, namely two for Praetorians. And for the fire bolts, I will say I think these are slightly better of the two, just because cryo is more suited for large bursting hits to rapidly freeze many enemies, whereas fire has the capability to spread between multiple living targets and just go absolutely out of control. So in a choke point environment, I think I'd rather have the fire bolts over the cryos, as you can lead more bugs entering the fight over the existing bug corpses that are burning, or wherever your fire arrows are, so there's just a lot more potential for dominoes and chain reactions. However, I will say that the fire arrows are even worse at dealing with large targets, taking three to burn a single Praetorian. However, I will acknowledge that in this testing environment, there's no other bugs to chain or use fire spread against the Praetorian, so this is definitely a skewed result. Whenever deliberately spreading fire among these grunt guards and keeping them on top of the Praetorian, we're able to set them on fire in basically a single arrow. This is one of those overclocks that's just going to have to be used in multiple missions and practiced for a long period of time to really get a good feel for it. Like I said, these are essentially identical overclocks, just one is frost and one is fire. Moving on to the unstable, this is where the real fun stuff is. First, we have bodkin points, which is essentially a chain hit ricochet modification for this weapon. Don't let this overclock fool you, it actually goes pretty crazy whenever you shoot into a crowd of enemies, ricocheting a true multitude of times and even hitting the same target more than once. This pairs extremely well with magnetic shafts in the 5th tier to make it home in on enemies in an IFG. It's really hard to say the upper ceiling of potential for this overclock at this moment in time, it really does need more testing. But I think it's going to be one of those sleeper powerful overclocks. Trifork Volley. This shoots 3 bolts at the same time. It gives you slightly more ammo, but obviously, like most of the other overclocks, your bolts aren't going to be retrievable, and you get a little bit less damage per bolt, and you have a much longer reload time as you're essentially loading three bolts at once. This one is the go-to for chunking large enemies. Combining this with cryo, even on the highest difficulty, you can absolutely shred through boss enemies. So with all of this stuff in place, let's hop into a mission with Trifork Volley and see how it handles against some boss enemies. So I will say that I think all of the crossbow overclocks are pretty well balanced. For the way that I play the game, Trifork definitely stands out as especially powerful, as it carries the large bursting damage capabilities of jumbo shells, but also gives you a little bit of extra utility with the secondary bolts, so in this case, pheromones. So really this overclock and mod combination for me is just carrying an extra type of scout grenade as well as jumbo shells at all times, which needless to say is incredibly powerful. This will definitely be my go-to weapon whenever special powder isn't appropriate and I don't feel like running embedded detonators, as I've always found them a little clunky. Also, it's only come to my attention extremely recently, but apparently Praetorians and Oppressors have an innate 20 and 30% damage resistance to normal arrow types. Since they're a special damage type called Pierce, and these two enemies have a specially defined resistance to this type of damage. Not sure exactly why this is, but this certainly does make the vanilla crossbow a little bit weaker against those enemies. But that's about all I have for you today. I know I expressed some concern in the past that the crossbow would be undertuned for high level and high difficulty play, but I think I can put those worries to rest now as it seems to be performing extremely well in everything that I've played. If you'd like to catch me live streaming Season 2 a week after it comes out, you can find me over on Twitch. If you'd like to talk to me or my community members about anything upcoming in Season 2, you can find us over on Discord. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.